welcome. Um, welcome, everybody. Um, we're going to get started just in the essence of time. You know, we want to be mindful of everybody's busy day today. Um, so I want to thank you all for joining us for one of our virtual summer programs for parents and families at Dickinson. My name is Sarah Maslin Fathery. I'm the director of parent relations here at the college, and I can't wait to officially welcome you all to campus in just a few short weeks um, in August when you start to arrive with your students. We are also glad that your family has found Dickinson to be the right choice for your student and that you're able to spend some time with us this afternoon to learn more about what you can expect about their experience as a student athlete in our community. And as parents of athletes, I'm sure that your journey to find a college for your student where they could continue to pursue their passion as an athlete was an incredibly thoughtful and perhaps a pretty long process that may have begun much earlier than it would for the average college bound student. And so I want to just recognize and applaud you for all of the support that you have shown your student athlete over the years, um, the many competitions you attended, training trips, tournaments, that you uh, took your student to or your son or daughter to to help them get to this point and begin this new journey as a D3 athlete at Dickinson. Here at Dickinson, just about a quarter of our students are athletes and we have a wonderful community of athletic coaches and training professionals that are here to provide continued support to your student during their time at Dickinson. And today I'm joined by a number of colleagues who will speak to you about leadership and development opportunities, community engagement, alumni connections, and much more that is available to our athletes during their time. And we're also here to answer any questions that you might have about the start of their experience. And so I'd, I'd like to um, point you to the Q&A feature that we have that you'll, you should see at the bottom of your screen. If you have questions throughout the presentation, please um, pop them in there and we'll do our best to either answer them live or respond to you there, or um, we'll get back to you afterwards if we need to. Um, so let's get started, everyone. And um, at this time, I'd like to ask Joel Quattrone, Dickinson's athletic director, to introduce himself to you and to say a few words. Thank you. Thanks, Sarah. Um, thanks, everyone, for joining us today. My name is Joel Quattrone. I'm the director of athletics at Dickinson. And, and Sarah and Sam, thanks very much for, for putting this together. We're certainly thrilled to have uh, your sons and daughters joining our athletic programs uh, and can't wait to meet them and, and certainly meet you as well. You know, as a director of athletics, um, it's, it's important for me to have winning programs in our department, obviously. You know, we've had a fair amount of success with our programs in the past, and, and it's our mission um, to get all of our programs to a position where they contend uh, annually or normally uh, every other year or so with Centennial Conference championships. Uh, we need to get there. We need to be part of the tournaments and we need to, to get in the NCAA uh, postseason tournaments as well. So there's, there's great excitement uh, in being part of that journey. Um, and your kids will be asked to commit their very, very best uh, to bring about success to their team and obviously to them. Um, our coaches are, are going to provide them an opportunity to compete uh, and to contribute right away. And, and through this process of, of preparation uh, and competition, um, your kids will be learning some valuable life skills, which will help them prepare for whatever life has in store for them when they leave campus. You know, while the life of a student athlete is, is a busy one, um, I'm very confident your kids will find that we have a really good balance between academics and athletics. Our kids achieve success in both areas. Um, every one of our 25 athletic programs this last year had a cumulative GPA over 3.0 and many, you know, at 3.5, 3.6 or higher. Um, our student athletes are also very active uh, in areas of student life. Uh, just to give you an example of, of who our student athletes are, you know, they're, they're Fulbright scholars. Um, they are Phi Beta Kappa. Uh, many do research with their professors in a number of different areas. They are class officers. Uh, they are leaders in student senate. In fact, last year, the student senate president was uh, running back for the football program. Um, they also lead canned food drives for individuals and families in our local community. Um, they work every year with our local Special Olympics 
as they put on programs for their participants. Obviously, we, we, we want them to have successful outcomes in their chosen sport. And absolutely, we want them to be part of Centennial Conference Championship programs. You know, all of these things make me and, and, and our department and our college and certainly you very proud. Uh, and we cannot wait to get started. Uh, we think we have something very special here at Dickinson and, and with the academic experience that you'll be receiving um, and the athletic experience our coaches will provide, we're, we're really pleased that you've made this decision and can't wait to show you who we are. Um, so for the upcoming year, we, we are anticipating a, a very near normal athletic experience for our student athletes. The vaccination rates for our student athletes are, are still coming in, uh, but it is our expectation that we will have a high percentage of them vaccinated. And this will permit us greater flexibility um, and obviously be less restrictive in what we need to do. So when we will, as you would expect, we'll be play, paying close attention to CDC and our local state and health organization guidelines as we continue to monitor COVID. Uh, but we're excited to be in the position that we are in right now and thrilled to be back competing in full seasons. We are certainly excited about what the future holds um, and we're very, very pleased that your kids are gonna be part of them. So at this time, I'd like to introduce Janelle Nolt. Janelle is our head athletic trainer and she is a member of the college's health and safety committee. She'll talk a little bit more about what we will look like this fall. So thanks, Janelle. Right. Thanks, Joel. Um, as you just heard um, Joel mentioned, I am a member of the Health and Safety Committee here at Dickinson. I've been part of our COVID managed team here at Dickinson and have um, been part of the process of getting us prepared uh, for this fall, as well as being part of the success we had this spring and getting our teams um, back out on the field and, and getting back to competition. Um, we will be following all the guidelines from the CDC, as well as the Pennsylvania Department of Health, as well as the um, NCAA. Um, as our head athletic trainer um, and our athletics healthcare administrator, I attend the NCAA meeting um, for all the athletic healthcare administrators every two weeks. Um, and during that meeting, the NCAA Medical Advisory Board discusses the most recent, recent updates for COVID management and sport. <clears throat> um, and just our meeting last week, they shared that they're not releasing the guidelines um, for the fall semester for another two weeks, um, which will take us into the first week of August. So that does leave a little bit of um, some unknown um, leading into um, the, you know, into the first week of August. However, even without those, you know, specific guidelines from the NCAA, there are things that um, I can share about how we envision the expectations um, for the fall season. Uh, for our, our vaccinated students, the, the fall should be very close to a, a normal fall sports experience um, with very few expect, very few exceptions. Um, there'll be no regular testing, um, only if they begin to experience symptoms. For our unvaccinated student athletes, there will be a few additional restrictions that will remain in place from the spring semester um, and when we did competition in the spring, this past spring. There'll be regular testing according to the college program um, prior and prior to competition, there'll be some masking for meetings, locker rooms, weight room, um, and on the sidelines. Um, but there'll be no mask um, when we're actively engaged in practice or gameplay. <clears throat> and while managing COVID has, you know, become what feels like a full-time job for me and my staff, um, believe it or not, we do other things. We provide um, a comprehensive care for all athletic injuries. We work with all 25 um, of our intercollegiate athletic teams. We have three physicians that work with um, our athletic programs. We have four athletic trainers that are full-time. We have one part-time athletic <laughs> trainer that works with our programs. Um, we have a PT that comes on campus that works with us. Um, we all collaborate together to provide a great treatment plan um, that uh, for your son and daughter when they come to campus. And hopefully they don't suffer an injury, but if they do, um, we'll be here to help. Uh, our contact information is, is on the website, so you're always free to reach out to us if you have any questions, um, whether that's about COVID, COVID management, or any injury that, um, that may come up. So with that said, up next we have Alan Ceretti. Um, he's here to talk more about um, Red, Dev, Red Dev Athletics. Alan is our assistant AD, 
and our head men's basketball coach. Yeah, thank you, Janelle. Uh, and thanks for everybody here for joining us and congratulations. Obviously a great accomplishment for your student athletes to be joining an institution such as Dickinson. We're really happy to have them. And certainly we think the conference combines academics and athletics at, at one of the highest levels in the country, uh, particularly at the division three level. So we appreciate you all being here and congratulate you uh, on, on your students matriculating here. Uh, speaking a little bit on leadership, you know, one of our, our jobs here as coaches is to develop that within the student athletes that we have. Uh, you know, you start by doing that by coaching excellence in all things that they do. So we, we will demand of them both in the classroom, in the community, and then on the field, the quarter and the pool. Uh, you know, we feel like, you know, the way you do one thing is the way you do one thing is the way you do all things. We, we want them to be great. So it, it is kind of an all encompassing style that, that we want to coach them under, uh, you know, accountability, time management, communication, um, you know, handling adversity, all those key traits that, that they need to learn themselves, which they've already learned. But, but we can sharpen a bit and then they can turn those towards their teams and their communities in this institution as leaders. You know, you start with peer to peer leadership, of which we will ask of them, uh, you know, as they get older on our teams and they become leaders and, and turn into the leadership groups that each of us have captains groups. Uh, you know, we will ask them to lead up. There will, there will be times where your student athletes will come into offices of the coaches and give us their advice and their opinions. And that's what we expect of them. We, we want to see them grow in their time here. There's organizations amongst the, the athletic department and throughout campus, which they can become a part of. Uh, and we look forward to encouraging them to do that within our department. There's obviously SAC, the student athlete committee, uh, which has a strong voice, not only on, on campus, but throughout the, the conference uh, and then the NCAA. And then also, you know, there's the ACC, the, the uh, athletes of color coalition, which we just started last year, which has become a very strong voice for our department. And then hopefully, for the institution and into the conference. So there's some exciting things going on. And again, it starts with you know, the individual and, and all of your children have done a great job to get to this point. Uh, and now it's incumbent upon us to help them continue to develop and then impact not only our teams, but our department, uh, the institution, and then the community beyond. Uh, and so we take that job seriously. Uh, I think I'm throwing it over to Kim now, uh, Kim Mace Moore, um, who, who is, uh, and SWA here and head women's cross coach to talk to you a little bit about community involvement. Thanks, Al. Um, so, you know, part of our mission as a department is also to, you know, develop the whole person and we can do that in a variety of ways. Um, we talk about using our platform to give back to the community. And so each team kind of has autonomy to choose ways to connect with the community. Some examples that um, some of our teams participate in our reading programs, local um, canton drives with to support Project Share, uh, free youth clinics. Our football program does a Be the Match bone marrow drive, um, Relay for Life, and then collectively as a department, um, we host and volunteer with Special Olympics every year, and that's through the Student Athlete Advisory Council that Al mentioned, um, National Girls. Um, and sports day February um, we open it up to the community hopefully will be normal this year and can invite people in um, and then a big one is our run for staff 5k um, for 16 years we've hosted this event to raise awareness um, to the dangers of impaired driving all of our student athletes pledge to make responsible decisions most of our student athletes participate in the 5k or help to promote it um, so it's really just a great community event um, are just some of the things that uh, our student athletes participate in um, to give back to the community. And Upster, our associate AD and men's lacrosse coach. Thank you, Kim. Uh, great to be here with you all today. Really excited to have this opportunity and, and can't tell you how excited all of us are to have students back on campus here real soon. It's what we, we thrive with and haven't had that opportunity uh, enough recently. So really excited about that. I want to talk real briefly. I, I just finished, I'm an alum of Dickinson and just finished my 20th season at Dickinson and something that we have consistently improved and gotten better at. And I think we're really doing a great job with now is, is helping our young men and women with what comes after college with outcomes. There, there's some, some real uh, terrific resources on campus devoted to helping our young men and women with internships and then jobs and all of us as coaches do a terrific job of, of networking and connecting our current student athletes with our alums. And that affiliation is incredibly strong at Dickinson. 
and spans over the years. And each of us individually do some things to, to promote that and develop that. And again, generally as, as a college, we do an ex exceptional job with that. So there, there, are, there are real tangible outcomes and benefits to this experience and to uh, certainly to this degree and to the Dickinson Diploma. And we, we connect in many ways on and off campus with our alumni groups, uh, developing those networks, uh, inviting alumni back, mentoring with our current student athletes. Those connections mean a lot. Uh, and your sons and daughters will benefit from that and it continues to grow and improve every year. Uh, and you'll hear a lot more about that from your individual coach and, and program. Uh, turn it back over now to Sarah. Thanks everyone. Um, I haven't seen that many questions come in in the Q&A, but if anybody does have questions out there, um, you know, broadly about what to expect in the coming year, please feel free to plop them in there. Um, I, you know, I want to thank everybody who um, was speaking today about the great opportunities that sit before your students, the, safe, the emphasis on safety and leadership and the impact and development that students can have both at Dickinson and in the broader community and then in their future um, and what is to come after their Dickinson experience are all really extremely high priorities for us as we support your students over the next couple of years. Um, so I wanna thank you for sharing more about that. Um, there are some questions now coming in about move-in times and dorm information. Uh, there will be a message that is going out to all of our incoming families by the end of this week that will have some more specific information. Um, your students should receive a residence hall and roommate assignment in the first or second, probably next week, frankly. Um, that's what Res Life has informed me, but very early in August. And then coming with that information will also be information about move-in times. Um, and you will have to sign up for move-in times. Now, as far as... Um, athlete move-in days. If somebody wants to chime in and provide a little more information, it's my understanding that football will move in on Wednesday, August 11th, and then um, field hockey, cross country, soccer, volleyball, all move in on Wednesday, August 18th. Um, yep. Okay. <laughs> Great. So more information should be coming to you about that as well. Um, and if you have any specific questions about that, again, as a number of individuals have said here, um, please feel free to reach out to your student's individual coach because they'll be able to give you more specifics on those, um, on the move-in time. Um, there are some questions in here about student, that kind of are relative to the balance of athletics and um, academics, you know, are faculty supportive if athletes have to miss labs or classes or labs for games? Um, it, would anybody care to speak to that about the balance of academics and um, student the student athlete experience? Sure, I'll, I'll, I'll ahead, take Dave. that on, Sarah. There, there are some questions about the winter and spring sports move in. And, and those, those teams participating in the winter and spring do not move in early. They don't start at preseason as the fall teams will. So that's a normal move in as a non-athlete would. And again, coaches will be communicating all that information if they haven't already, um, as will the school, as you suggested. Now, in terms of the balance, there, I saw a couple of questions about classes that go late until 4.30 and labs and how's that impact practice and general balance. Uh, our, our faculty, uh, like coaches, are going to challenge your sons and daughters and expect the best. Um, that's the balance we have across campus. Uh, but it all works really well here. And so there are a couple of times a, a week where you might be finishing up class and finishing the lab or going to extra help from a TA or teacher. And practice maybe starts at 5 o'clock. And, and we know of a couple guys coming down late every day. And and, and that's how we do things and that works and we communicate those things and uh, that's part of the process. And uh, we're fortunate that there's, there's not many, if, if any, evening classes. So we generally have that block of time, you know, that five to seven block uh, that's open and, and just about everybody can be there for the full practice. So it really works well. We're, we're blessed to have that. 
Thanks. Al, uh, I was just going to say, I think you wanted to jump in on a couple of things. Yeah, I, I clicked on answer live like seven times because I think a lot Dave covered a lot of those and, and okay. some of those overlap. I know there's some questions on the board about specific break times and practice times. That's coach specific. So your student athletes will be getting those that information uh, from the coaches as they get into to their seasons. I know being a winter sport, we are here a majority of the winter while the campus is on break. Uh, and, and we will get our student athletes specific calendars and timelines so they can plan for travel, family holidays, et cetera. So I would imagine and, and know that a lot of uh, you know, coaches will do the same. I know there are a lot of questions on here about personnel um, as well. Uh, and just know that, that obviously that, you know, Joel may touch on that, but there are, um, are some coaching positions that have, have become open uh, within the department. And we are obviously forming committees going through processes uh, that we need to, to, to get you answers quickly. So again, that's a little more sports specific. Joel, I don't, I don't know if you want to touch on that one. I think you're on mute, Coach. Yeah. Well, um, while we hold up on that, there, Janelle, there were a couple of questions just about uh, vaccination requirements, and I did respond to one. Um, I know that you know it's Dickinson is asking students to be vaccinated unless there's a medical or religious reason um, that they cannot or should not be. And from your experience with the Health and Safety Committee, I didn't know if you wanted to speak to that at all. If there's anything else that you have that you could share. Sure, that is um, the college's policy. They are requiring students to be um, vaccinated um, with what you said, they, with, with the exempt, exception of the exemption of religious or medical reasons. Um, there is an actual form um, that you are supposed to fill out for those reasons. However, there are um, some cases where students are coming from areas, whether that's international or other areas where they were not able to get the vaccine. Um, prior to coming back. And so there, the wellness center is um, going to have some access to vaccines for those students um, to be able to administer their vaccine once they get back to campus. Thank you. Sarah, sorry, my, my screen went white on me and I just got <laughs> you back. So yeah, in, in response to the question about personnel, there, there are a few openings that we um, have just received here. Uh, we're in the process of, of gathering up information and uh, moving forward with with looking to fill those fill those positions. Um, rest assured, we we we've been very fortunate in the past. I don't see that there's going to be any change in in with regard to getting individuals who are top notch, um, very understanding of of the life of the student athlete, um, and understanding of Dickinson in a way that that uh, they will coach your kids in a way that you'll be very happy. It's Sarah too, I see some questions on here about grade point average, and I know Dave, yes. there's some of that. Um, one of my duties as assistant athletic director is compliance. Uh, you know, grade point average from an NCAA standpoint, eligibility is determined by your institution. Uh, our institution here, you know, there are some baselines and some guidelines, but I think it goes in a case by case basis, again, with this individual student athlete and the coach. So it, there is not a hard and fast number that the NCAA gives us or the league gives us. It's on an individual basis and you move forward semester by semester. And I know I've been here 12 years. Um, we've had some student athletes that we pulled out of competition and practice at a certain level because they needed that, that focus and others we've kept with us because we felt like the day-to-day -day structure and schedule was better for them. So again, that's from a coaching standpoint, but that, that is on a institutional and then team by team basis. Thanks. Janelle, I saw there were a couple of things you wanted to <clears throat> Yeah, there was a question about how can you show proof of vaccination before returning to campus? That is actually really important. So if your son or daughter has not done that, that would be actually really helpful if you can get them to, to do that. Um, right now, we still have not collected all proof of vaccination. Um, the best way for them to do so is to log into their portal via the wellness center. Um, so they should have access to, to do that on the wellness center site. Um, uh, they go in, they log in, and they can actually upload um, their vaccine card. It's quicker, um, and we can, are able to record that data um, a lot 
easier, quicker. We get records of it much faster than if they take a picture of it and email it um, to the wellness center. It starts getting um, uh, added into our percentage of vaccination rate a lot faster. So if you can encourage them to do that um, sooner rather than later, that would be really helpful. Um, there was also a question about our athletic physical paperwork. Um, and I actually had a text from a, an athlete yesterday um, who just had a question about the difference between the wellness center paperwork and the athletic physical paperwork. Um, and I know sometimes first year students um, get their parents to help them with it, which is great. That is extremely helpful. We get better information a lot of times when parents help um, their, their child through that process. And so that information went out last week. Um, so if you haven't seen that, or if, if your um, son or daughter has not started asking you those questions, um, you, you may hear from them soon. Um, that the wellness center documentation and um, immunization records and paperwork for the wellness center is completely separate and different from the athletic um, paperwork. We don't share those documents. Um, we each keep our own medical paperwork separate. Um, and so you don't need to upload your vaccine card into the athletic paperwork. Um, that part is, is different and separate. Um, the uploading of the vaccine card happens on the wellness center side. Um, we will get that information in a different report format that will count to our athletic um, vaccine um, percentage rate. So you'll see the, um, it's called the ATS system um, that we use for our athletic paperwork. They'll get a portal. All of that um, is online, it's electronic, it's secure. All of that physical paperwork gets taken care of before your daughter or son comes to campus. Um, and then our team physician actually does physicals um, here on campus prior to clearance for participation. And then there was another one, Sarah, can you remind me what the other one was? Uh, the other one was about ROTC. Yes, um, <clears throat> there was a question about ROTC, ROTC and athletes um, participating, participating in both. Um, that has worked really well for us in the past. We have a lot of athletes um, who participate in both um, and do so um, successfully and, and do it very well. And, and we, both our coaches um, and ROTC work well together um, and, and it has not been an issue in the past. So um, it best, the thing that you wanna make sure that you talk to your son or daughter about is just that they communicate well with both their coach and their ROTC leaders to make sure that um, when they're in season, that, you know, that takes some priority. And then when they have some other big training events in RTC and they really have um, some high level, high volume things going there that they're not overloading themselves in training and putting themselves at risk for injury. Um, and so it's just a matter of communicating what's happening in, in both things. So if any coaches have anything to add to that, um, feel free to add. My, my only thing, I, I know there were a couple of questions on here, uh, Sarah, about meals. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, the, the cafeteria extended hours this year, uh, which was part of it at the request of the student athletes. Uh, you know, they've worked closely with our department to look at some of the challenges with later practice times and facilities. If that occurs, because we're making allowance for those labs and later times in class, we may go a little later and that may infringe upon dinner time. In most cases, uh, again, they extended hours and there, there's almost a uh, hundred percent certainty that they're going to have the opportunity to eat somewhere on campus with their meal plan post-practice or pre-practice. The other thing with travels and breaks, we obviously are, are accountable for providing meals. Uh, I mentioned that we are here as a men's basketball team over winter break. We are providing meals for our student athletes uh, three times a day for about a month that we're here uh, and when we take on that expense. So there's no expectations of them having to find a meal on their own in a break time when we're requiring them to be here. Thanks. Um, I noticed a question about orientation for athletes, and I know that you guys aren't fall sport coaches, but um, obviously, you know, students who are fall sport athletes are arriving prior to the official start of orientation for first year students, um, but their schedule does integrate with the orientation schedule, and I don't know if anybody has anything else they can add to that. Um, if there, you know, are any experiences that students um, are insured to have along with the first year class, or if you have any information on that, I can always follow up if there isn't. Sure, we, we have, Sarah, we have a, a representative from our coaching staff on the, on the orientation committee 
Mm -hmm. um, so we've worked really well with, with the orientation staff uh, to put a plan together where our, where our student athletes are able to uh, participate in their activities from an athletic standpoint and still be able to um, make all of the orientation meetings. So it, yeah, it's, it's all, all been set up. Great, thank you. Um, and then I did see a question about homecoming and family weekend as well. Um, I know that, so homecoming and family weekend, for those of you who don't know, is uh, the weekend of September 17th, 18th, 19th. Um, it's going to be a great weekend. We have a home football game. We have a home field hockey game. Um, both soccer teams are away, I believe. And then there is a um, cross country long short invite, which will take place just outside of Carlisle. Um, so that's close by as well. Um, but we hope that you'll be back to join us and celebrate, um, you know, your students arrival to Dickinson, all other Dickinson athletic competitions that are taking place um, and really get to know the Dickinson community as well. Looking back through, looks like we've responded to most of the questions. Um, is there anything that I missed that maybe somebody else still, um, yeah, go ahead, Dave. A couple of questions about off season training. Yeah. And uh, some of that is, is much of it's limited by the NCAA. There's limits on, on what the practice season looks like and then the non-traditional. And we certainly follow all those guidelines. Um, our, our student athletes are competitive. Uh, they, they like to work on their game and continue, continue to develop their skills. So uh, there is a lot of outside of, of practice development uh, that the individuals are doing on their own or in small groups. So for, for many of the teams, many athletes, there, there is a year round commitment to developing. Um, and that could be in the traditional segment with coaches at practices or in the non-traditional or in uh, unstructured, um, you know, small group kind of play and development. Thank you. Uh, there's a question about um, students coming in to walk on and try out for sports um, and what the process is for that. If anybody wants to. Respond. Yeah, student, students in, are, are permitted to meet with coaches and express their interest in, in trying out. Um, in most cases, they'll do it during the non-traditional season. So for instance, um, if you are a soccer athlete um, your opportunity to try out would occur in the springtime. Um, but this is all based on the coach and their preference. But, but yes, there are opportunities for students to try out for programs. Those, those student athletes would have to go through the physical process prior to doing so. So they would have to do all the physical paperwork and see our team position prior to doing so. So that would have to be arranged prior to their tryout. Okay. Um, and access to athletic trainers if a student is not a varsity athlete. Um, Janelle, are you able to share some information? Yeah, so um, only varsity student athletes are um, able to be treated in the athletic training room and receive athletic training services. And that is because of the way that our um, SOP is written, our standard operating procedures and our state license laws and how our doctors supervise us. So. It's a direct standard of care. Thank you. Um, I know that the website has been updated with many of our sports or team sports schedules that are available. And there was a question about um, when it will be updated with some you know, winter and spring sports. Um, Joel, are you aware of when those schedules will be finalized and able right. to be shared we, with families? Sure, sure. We, we are actually working with our coaches right now. Some of the of the schedules have not been finalized yet. So we're waiting for them to, to finalize that information before we put it up. Uh, but we are close and we'll get them up as soon as we possibly can. Thank you. Um, another one, Janelle, are, I haven't heard of any restrictions on attending games this fall. Um, is there anything that either you or Joel want to share from the Centennial Conference that has been decided about that? Yeah, currently there's there are no restrictions on on outdoor events, um, no social distancing, no no worries in that area. Uh, with regard to indoor events, you know, there's for those that are not vaccinated, obviously masking is going to be 
uh, be required. Um, but it's, as Janelle said, we're, we have to make sure we're staying current with all CDC and health and state organization guidelines. But as we speak right now, those are the only restrictions that we, we can see. Thank you. Um, there's a question about athletic gear, um, you know, and how it's provided, uh, what's required. Um, I would imagine that this, you know, varies from each sport. Um, but if there's a, a broad response you could possibly provide about that, that would be great. It, it, it does vary by sport, um, but we will institutionally provide what our student athletes need for practice and for games, um, minus the shoes. Uh, we, we do not provide the shoes, running shoes or, or uh, spikes uh, for, for them. We provide deals for them through Under Armour, but, but we, don't, we don't make that purchase. And they're not restricted to, to just Under Armour. They can wear whatever their preference is. Great, thank you. Um, anything else any, you know, that anybody wants to add or share? Yeah, please go ahead, Janelle. I know um, there was some questions about, you know, if their coach is um, you know, no longer available, how will information be communicated to them or the paperwork? Um, we will get paperwork to you um, we'll probably communicate with some team captains and get information to you, um, or it will be sent directly to you. So don't worry about that. You will be in the loop um, and things will be sent directly to you. So I so saw there was another question about paperwork. Um, the paperwork was sent out on Friday. Um, so if your coach was on vacation or just hasn't gotten around to it, it should be, it should be on its way. And then for um, student athletes moving in early, um, curious if they move into their actual room that they're assigned to, or if there's interim housing or temporary housing for them. For the most part, they will move into their, their actual room uh, unless their room is being taken offline for some reason that you could expect to move into your permanent room. And they, and they will certainly let you know if that's not the case. Okay, great. We've got a great laundry question. Uh, I just noticed that popped up. Uh, that is a service provided, which is wonderful uh, that the student athletes can take advantage of. There is a loop system, uh, which they run through and we have very dedicated staff who take care of that for them at pretty much odd hours to, to make sure that they get what they need for practice and games. Most times the veterans on the teams will lead them through that process, which is not a difficult one, but that is a definite bonus uh, of being a student athlete. Yeah, it's a great bonus. <laughs> Sarah, if you don't mind, I, just the coaching me, I'm seeing some questions about paperwork. Yeah. Um, I, I, I'm dealing with this currently with, with our student athletes. Uh, this event, this opportunity is wonderful for us to speak directly to you as parents. And we are always outlets for the parents of our student athletes, particularly for their care and well-being and where they're going in the future. But as they turn the page and become co collegiate student athletes, a lot of this is in their hands. Uh, everything that we're sending will be through their portal or their email. And I know as a parent and certainly as a coach, that communication continues to change. So if it's not on Snapchat or, or Instagram, they may not see it. Uh, but as we remind our guys often it is now their responsibility to check that portal and stay aligned with it. They should certainly come to you for help, uh, with, particularly with the first years and the paperwork on the medical issues. So we understand the concern there that they may have missed something. Uh, but, at, you know, as we move forward, we're going to work directly with the student athletes most time once they become 18 or older. And then it's going to be up to them to trans transfer what they need to you and vice versa. So please encourage them to keep an eye out on that portal uh, and keep an eye on their email, their Dickinson email. Thanks, Al. That's a great point. Um, you know, and, and I think a, a great place for us to wrap up here today. You know, it's been a wonderful experience having the opportunity to interact with all of the families who have logged in today virtually. Um, and I want to thank all of our, you know, coaches and staff here who have taken time out of their day um, to offer their support. And I want you to know that everything that has been shared is, is sincere. And we are really looking forward to welcoming your families to the Dickinson athletic community and to the Dickinson 
Atkinson community as a whole. Um, we are excited to see what your student will accomplish both on and off the field. And we look forward to supporting them, um, you know, as they continue to pursue their athletic passion, but also as they continue to discover what their other passions are, um, be that academic or social or, you know, another area of impact that they want to have um, in their life and be well beyond Dickinson. Um, this is a relationship that extends well beyond their four years and I know that everybody on this screen um, is in touch with individuals who graduated many years ago and are continuing to extend their support um, and their mentorship to them. And we are looking forward to doing that for your student and your family as well. Um, and so I, I just want to thank you again. Uh, thank you for your questions and for your time today. This program has been recorded and we will put it on the website and get that information out to you as well. And um, as the coaches have shared here, if you have specific questions, check with your student. They probably have more information than you think. Um, or you know, feel free to reach out to the coach directly. Obviously, they are here to be a resource for you as well. And if there are any other you know, overarching questions, you can send them to parents at dickinson.edu and I will do my best to respond or put you in touch with the right person um, to get your questions answered as well. So um, thank you so much. Again, thank you for all that you've done to get your student to this point. And we look forward to seeing you in just a couple of weeks. So thanks, everyone. Have a great day.